Danny, I wanted to start with you first. Like so many, you turn to art to understand life better. And this film is so raw and emotional. It doesn't shy away from highlighting those difficult conversations that many, particularly in the LGBTQ plus community are having. Can you talk a little bit about the genesis behind this project and how you and Andy were able to push each other as creatives and fill the space that's so needed? Good question. Yeah. Um, a lot of components to the question. I'll start with the genesis. So like you mentioned, I think... I personally always turn to art as a way of understanding things that are happening in my own life. And, you know, a lot of the movie is based on people and events and conversations that Andy and I had um, and continue to have in our life. And I felt like there wasn't a good film that represented kind of that journey that we were going on as a, as a couple or that our friends were going on. I felt like that, that was a void. And so, you know, I, I felt not even necessarily that this was going to be a movie that was going to be made because, you know, that's such a, a, a fever dream, right? That the movie be mm -hmm. made, but as, as a way of understanding and help myself understand it, writing it was really helpful in, in kind of addressing those large questions about what does it mean to like be queer in this time? Or what does it mean to like make a family? Or what does it mean? What do we leave behind if, if we, you know, start, forging like a new path and how do we bring, you know, the, the beautiful stuff about being queer that our queer community has always had like a chosen family into the present along mm -hmm. with like all the opportunities that are available to us. So it was really like a, a way of understanding my own life better. And I, the hope is that now that it's made that it helps people also find it. And for that same reason. I feel like so many people are going to feel seen through this film. And Andy, your chemistry reads were all done via Zoom. And you were really intentional on the order in which you shot this film to give the cast that time to build that rapport. What was that moment on set when you realized they had everything needed to bring these complex dynamics to life? Oh, um, I'm like trying to remember. I think it was like, it was when we had it was like we had scheduled like some Nico and Juan scenes right at the beginning and those were like the fun playful scenes you know like smiling and laughing and like photo montage so they didn't, they didn't get really into like the the heart of like acting until like a few days in and like you know it was like with I think with every like filmmaker you dream that you like get your actors all together and you like go to a cabin in the woods and you like hang out and you become best friends and then it's like everybody's got this great chemistry and for like an indie film it was literally it was like I had two hours of rehearsal with Nico and Juan and then the next day we were shooting so you know I like relied like heavily on on them uh you know to build that rapport um so really I think it was like you know two or three days like into filming when we started like getting into like acting scenes you know when when uh we started like doing some more dialogue with them like and I started seeing this like great like playful back and forth between them you know really that was when it, it got kicked off so Danny touched upon this already, but this is a question for the both of you, but chosen family is such a running theme within this film, especially within this community. Who are the people in your own lives who've held space for you in a similar way, impacted your own journeys as storytellers? Yes. Yeah, so, Outside of each other. <laughs> yeah. um, him. There are pretty, um, I, I stole a lot from our real life and our real friends. So I would say like each of the friends in the movie is kind of has like a real life counterpart. Not, not like, you know exact replicas but i took a lot of details from our own life and and kind of wove them into the movie um so i i mean we have like a a leah version who's like a really close friend our our friend um brendan is kind of like the jamie who's actually mm -hmm. we're, we're meeting for lunch today yeah. so i mean that was the thing and the, and what's been beautiful is you know we have our own daughter now and they have become like a really integral part of her life as well. So it's, we mm -hmm. have really been able to bridge kind of like our support system into this like new type of family. Yeah. And it was like fun, right? Like you take all, like, obviously we're friends with all of these people and we like took elements from, you know, different friends and we were able to like pack them together. You know what I mean? We're like, all right, well, we have our really like sassy and hilarious friends, you know, like that's a great, we'll package that together. And there's Jamie and, you know, Leah is our strong willed, like, you know, usually knows what she wants, like demanding like lesbian. Well, we have one of those and we have another one that we like sandwich things together, you know, and obviously with the movie, we like, you know, 
made them cinematic and over the top and and i'll say too they, they weren't the only ones who were kind of subject i mean the, 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 a lot of thomas has repackaged me a lot of oscars repackaged dandy so yeah. it is mm. yeah you, you write what you know yeah you actually answered the next question, but Danny, I was speaking with a writer recently who's similar to you and Andy, created this really deeply personal story, but he talked about the importance of having it deviate a bit from his own life so that he could examine it from a new perspective and give that space for his ensemble to make it his own. Was that something that you were both mindful of throughout this writing process? How did that influence your decision to show these two different couples and their own unique paths to parenthood? Yeah, I, the, the number one thing I would say when people ask a question like this is that... Um, you know, it's like, it's very like loosely based because I don't think that Andy and I are very interesting people. I don't think if you made a movie about, about us in particular, that anyone would want to watch it or listen to our conversation. So, you know, that's part of that's and, and it is like a, a bit of like a, you, you do want to protect yourself and kind of your own life by, by putting some distance between you and the characters. So that's, that was part of it. And then also, you know, the uh like a former child star is a much interesting much more interesting like character to play with than you know yeah i mean I think, yeah i mean i think for like us it was like we took these you know people in our lives it was us we took like you know a, small elements from it you know this was it was the discussion that we had about whether or not we wanted to become parents you know and then we just kind of took those little things and then we put it into this movie but then we filled those characters with like all of these like you know cinematic moments or uh, over the top moments or dramatic beats you know that you need in a movie um you know so i think that's like always the thing to at least the like the takeaway while it's like very loosely based on our story it is you know jazzed up with movie stuff mm -hmm. And it is also such a beautiful balance between comedy and drama with this within this film. Yeah. It's so grounded in truth and reality. And so yeah. much of your cast had such a deep connection to the story. As a director, yeah. how do you foster that environment on set where they can go into these vulnerable places and explore all these different beats on such a tight filming schedule? Yeah, I mean, I'm like forever grateful for all of these actors, you know, who have participated in this indie film. They weren't doing it for the paycheck, let me tell you. Um, you know, so all of them had some sort of like personal connection where they were either like going through, uh, you know, similar similar things, you know, in terms of like having children with, you know, with Nico, who's who's talked about it extensively, mm -hmm. um, you know, but I've always like as a director, I always like try to foster those environments for the actors to like get in the mood. It really is like whatever scene that I'm shooting that day, I've like thought about how I'm going to get this actor in this mood to get them to this moment. Is it a comedic moment, you know, where we can all be kind of, uh, you know, happy and laughing on set and throwing jokes out there? Um, or is it a more serious moment? You know, I remember, you know, the, the scene where Emily Hampshire, you know, um, talks about uh, her experience uh, going through, you know, with a loss, um, with a miscarriage. Um, and I like played, you know, like Brandy Carlisle on music. And I have that like kind of on repeat because I was like, that's the, that feeling that you get when you listen to some Brandy Carlisle songs. It's like, that's the feeling, Emily, that I want. So like music to me, mm. you know, I had built this like 40, 40 song playlist for Mattachine um, that I would constantly kind of like go back to, um, you know, and play on set with the speaker, you know, and then right when we called action, I would cut the music off, Um you know, and I had also, it was like an interesting thing too, because like music was uh, something that all the actors kind of, they all responded to it really well at the beginning. They're like, oh, this is really nice. Andy, can you also play this song? Can we add this song to the playlist? Because this is what, you know, this is the th the song that I have with my partner and it'll get me, help mm -hmm. me get to that, that moment. So, yeah. You need to release that playlist on, on social yeah. media. I do. And I do. I should. I should. You definitely should. And Danny, there's such an empathetic quality to your writing where you feel and understand both Thomas and Oscar's perspective. And it was really important to both of you that neither of them was villainized for their points of view and how that changes over time. How were you able to toe that line so seamlessly throughout this uh, script writing process? And this is something we've been told a lot, that the, there's like a universal nature to like what is going on with Thomas and Oscar. Like, obviously, it's like a very specific story. Um, but it, I think, you know, everybody's been in a situation where they're either like in a friendship or in a relationship where people just have like a different idea of how they're going to go forward. And it doesn't have to be about children. It can be about anything. It could be, you know, I've had, we've had friends who one wants to move somewhere and the other wants to stay where they are. And it's like, there's an interesting dynamic where 
in the movie, I, I really wanted to make sure that for me, I recognize that Oscar's not in the wrong for not wanting to do it. Like everyone, he has a very valid reason. Um, and I think that just like leaning into that complexity and trying to give both of them the the room to show their perspective, you know, when they're fighting, it's not, no one's a villain. And I think, you mm -hmm. know, Pablo will, people like to tell him that like, oh, he he was the bad guy. He was and, the guy, yeah. And, and Juan Pablo is very good about, and I agree with Juan Pablo that Oscar is not a bad person. He's just wanted something different. Yeah. And there's nothing wrong yeah. with that. And yeah, so I, I tried to really lean into it and give them both time and space to in the movie to to kind of in the history too. I think for one for Oscar's character, a lot of it really ties into you know his yeah her child star. Like this is really like you can really uh, I hope that people really understand that like the idea of something that he's that's defined his whole life kind of coming back to him is like a big opportunity for him, and that would be a reason not want to not want to pursue mm -hmm. a big life change at that moment. Yeah. But, yeah yeah i think that both of you do such a beautiful job showing how your wants can change over time and it feels very human and very grounded and andy you had your daughter during post-production yeah. how did that relationship with this script change during that time and did it impact the editing process and the themes that you wanted to get across in the film oh yeah it definitely impacted the editing it took a lot longer than i wanted um no, so florence our daughter was born a month after we shot the movie um it was like a, it was like it, it was very weird that the movie we made about like a character who wanted to be a dad it was like I wasn't a dad when we shot it but I I at that time I wanted to be a dad and our 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 wonderful Sergei was pregnant um so we, like we knew it was coming and then after filming it was like that's when everything hit and you know I one of the things that I've learned you know as a director um you know, as a feature director is how much of the story is like mm. crafted in post. And it's so challenging, right? Because I've, I had never done that before. I think like sometimes people feel like we put these like first time directors on this pedestal that they have to make the, the, the best, the perfect film, you know, and for a lot of us, it's like, yeah, we had made shorts and yeah, I had made music videos. And so I knew how to shoot a scene and I knew how to shoot coverage and I knew how to work with the actors, but then like taking all of these things in post and really seeing like, oh, this scene needs to move over here. This scene needs to move over there, um, you know, took me a little bit more time. And I think it was also because Florence was born and I was up late and, and we were doing feedings every three hours and um, learning that process as well. Um, but it was just, I think when I like look back, you know, there are some, uh, you know, there's some scenes that like weigh heavier on my heart, right. That I like now mm -hmm. I understand a little bit closer to our, to Thomas of like what his feelings are, you know, especially that like last montage about, um, you know, creating a family, you know, that was something that I was, you know, tears in my eyes, you know, as I was like editing that, um, because now I had done that. I had a baby, you know, waiting for me at home. So it was just incredible. This is another question for the both of you, but this is both of your feature film debuts and your respective roles. What was the most surprising part about this overall experience for each of you? And what, what will you bring to the next project? I mean, the experience of writing something, in, I, I mean, the first time I, the first draft of this was written before even the idea of having a child or making a movie seem possible. And so I think moving forward, what I really learned throughout the process was a kind of what Andy was talking about is how something that works on the page doesn't always necessarily work in a finished product. And so seeing the way that, you know, story beats that I thought like, there's no other way we can assemble this puzzle being like moved around in different parts of the movie and how it made it better. And also, you know, the experience of having like actual people like reading the lines and people whose main job it is to look at the story from this character's perspective and like taking all this feedback in to like make the script better was something I really had to learn kind of on the job. And I think going forward, it's going to be much a, a different process of writing, thinking about, you know, taking feedback and they're thinking about the logistics of how do we actually make this and, mm. and what that looks like. So that's, I think just a lot of like the, um nitty-gritty like filmmaking parts of it I think will inf influence how I write going forward yeah I think I think for me Kevin it was like I mean definitely surprised 
I, like it really it's similar Danny I think because it's like we I we would read Danny's script and we would do table reads beforehand we're like oh this is great like this is perfect like we don't need to change this and then once you're you're shooting it you're also shooting it and you're like okay well this feels great this feels really good and then once you're in the edit bay you're like this is like too long I was like this is like we don't need this fight to go on longer than six minutes so it's just cut 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 and you find these these beats that you can like take out and that like just it makes the film stronger, you know, even though as a director, it's difficult. And I'm sure as a writer to be like, oh, we cut these lines or we cut this awesome scene or this awesome montage, you know, it just, it, it makes it stronger. So I think that like how I would apply that for the next one is that I would definitely storyboard. We, I had worked with this incredible storyboard artist for Mattachine where we did maybe like um, a fourth of the film. Um, mm -hmm. you know, and then I built these like animatics in post where beforehand where I could like see these montages play out. Um, and then, so I think for going forward, I would definitely board the entire movie, uh, and put it in a timeline and make an entire movie out of storyboards. Um, and just so that we could try to find those problem areas before we got on set.